So in the previous video, we saw how the CP and CV values for ideal gases change and how we can understand the changes in CP and CV values for ideal gases and how we can calculate the changes in internal energy and the change in enthalpy for those gases. So in this video, we will look at some things that are not ideal gases, far from it. We will look at solids and liquids typically. Uh, substances that are called incompressible sub substances whose density does not change much uh, during the process. And so uh, we will be looking at solids and liquids and how the uh, concept of specific heats is brought into these substances, right? So uh, to define an incompressible substance, is a substance whose density does not change um, appreciably during a process, right? So examples include liquid water. Most liquids uh, can be reasonably assumed to be incompressible, right? And solids, many solids are incompressible. So if you have a block of copper, for many, for most practical purposes uh, involving thermodynamics, it can be treated as an incompressible solid. Right. So if you have a block of gold or a block of copper or a block of iron or steel, those could be treated as incompressible solids. Right. And uh, so for these uh, incompressible substances whose volume does not really change by much, right, because their density is constant and uh, for a system whose mass is constant, if density does not change, then the volume does not change either. Right. So which means that the volume as well as the specific volume uh, remain constant. Right. So this is a useful approximation uh, that we can then use to, to simplify certain things, right? And um, for these substances, usually um, many cases, um, the CV and the CP values are approximately equal. Why? Because their volume does not change anyway and so whether it is a constant volume process or a constant pressure process, they end up with the same specific heat. That is the reason be, The reason being that their volume does not change by much anyway and so uh, their CV and CP values are very close and so we just call this specific heat C without being specific as to whether it is uh, specific heat at constant volume or specific heat at constant pressure. The reason being that both of them are approximately same and for all engineering purposes, they can be assumed to be equal and so we only talk about specific heats. So you might have heard of a sentence like the specific heat of water is 4.2 kilojoule per kg Kelvin, right? So that means that the CP and CV values of water are so close that we just call it specific heat without qualifying further whether it is specific heat at constant volume or at constant pressure, right? So, um, so given this, let us look at how the internal energy changes can be quantified and how the enthalpy changes can be quantified for such a substance, right? Again, going by the definition, um, CV equals dou U by dou T at constant volume. And because the volume does not change, the specific volume does not change anyway, uh, I can write this as CV equals and that du equals CV dt, right? And um, so the internal energy change then is integral CV dt. So this part uh, looks very similar to an ideal gas, right? Uh, where I can write du as CV dt. Remember that this in general is true for an ideal gas or for a constant volume process. And because an incompressible substance typically has a constant volume, I can write du equals CV dt. And so delta u equals integral CV dt. And if CV is constant, I can pull it out of the integral and it becomes CV delta t, right? And uh, let us look at uh, enthalpy changes.
So let's start by writing down enthalpy as uh, U plus uh, PB. And then uh, if I differentiate this, then I get dH equals du plus PdV plus VdP, right? And uh, we do know that for an incompressible substance that the change in volume or the change in specific volume is pretty small. So I can get rid of this term. So I can write dH equals du plus VdP or I can write dH equals du for an incompressible substance, I can write as CVDT or just CDT uh, plus VDP, right. And in many cases, we will So I will bring that up, dH equals CDT plus VDP and uh, in many cases uh, we can have, we do sometimes have processes that are constant pressure process, right. So constant pressure process. What is an example of a constant pressure process? So if I have a water heater at home, uh, then what it is doing is there is water coming into the water heater, there is water going out of the water heater, but the temperature of the water is changing, but the pressure is not changing by much, right. So and water is an incompressible substance, right. So uh, I have a constant pressure process which means I can take this term out and I can write dH as uh, CDT. So for an incompressible substance undergoing a constant pressure process, I can write the change in enthalpy dH as uh, CDT and uh, therefore I can write delta H as integral of CDT, right. Um, alternatively, I can have a constant temperature process. What is an example of that? Let us say I have a water pump. Water is incompressible and pump does not really change the temperature of water. What it does is it changes the pressure of water, right. It raises the pressure of water and so there is a change in pressure but there is no change in temperature, right. So which means the first term now I can take out but the second term remains, right. So for a constant pressure process, oh sorry, constant temperature process, I can write uh, dH as uh, VDP and delta H as integral VDP. Here again, I can make use of the fact that the specific volume is constant. Why? Because it is an incompressible substance, there is not much change in density and therefore there is not much change in the specific volume and so I can pull that out of the integral to write uh, V delta P. Now this is very uh, useful as we will see when we look at energy analysis of open systems where we can say that the work done by the pump on the water is the specific volume of the water multiplied by the change in pressure of the water um, that is per kg of the water that flows through the pump, right. And so this is a very useful result and so is this one um, that talks about uh, changes in enthalpy of um, substances that are incompressible solids or liquids that undergo constant pressure process and or a constant temperature process, right. 